Hello and welcome to your fourth singing lesson as part of the Triple Threat Project. Well, we had some fun last week getting our vocal folds to vibrate. I'm going to be staying in the sound source again today and going into the topic of range. Now, before I do that, I want to begin with a very important message. And that is that there is no one in the world that has a voice like yours. No one. Your voice is unique and it needs to be loved and cherished and celebrated. So often I come across singers who are desperately trying to sound like somebody else instead of embracing what they sound like and what their set of experiences brings to their performance. So I want you to love your voice. Now, it might not be in the condition that you want it to be. That's okay. I certainly know that my body is not in the condition I wanted it to be after being isolated for so many weeks. But the point is that I can change. I can train and try and get my body into the shape that I want it to ultimately be in. You can do the same with your voice. You can get vocal lessons. You can join a choir. You can set aside a time for yourself to do some regular practice so that you might be able to find what your voice is capable of doing on a regular basis. So with that said, let's move into the area of range. What is range? Basically, range is the lowest note that you can sing and the highest note that you can sing and all those notes in between. Now, if you're not sure how to find your range, really easy way would be to get in front of a piano or a piano app and just start to speak and play around with those keys mm, and start mm, to find mm, somewhere mm, around there mm, where you sort of mm, hear it sounds mm. a little bit like your speaking tone and then try and sing through that with that more elongated breath. And from that, I would use that as my marking point. Now, you don't even need to know note names. You can just maybe designate a number to that one and go down from there and try and go up from there and find out how many numbers you can hit. So for example, to try and find my low note from there, I would just continually go down until my voice just peters out and it's no longer making that sung sound. So, uh, I think that's about it. <laughs> Debatable whether that's a sung sound as well. It's definitely sung, whether it's pleasant, that's debatable. So from there, I would go, cool. I know that this note here was really probably the lowest one I was comfortable saying was in my range. And then I would go all the way up the other end and try and find what my highest note was. And then I would mark the date and go, cool, on this date, this is my range. Now, that's very different to what I call your singing performance range. And that range should never be those notes that are hit and miss. So if you're finding that you can hit a bottom note on some days and not on others, I personally would never include that note in a performance because going into a performance, I don't wanna be there second guessing myself if that note is gonna to work today. So you might find that your performance range is just slightly in from your entire range. And you can think of it a bit like a stereo. You never want the volume right down on the zero because you can't hear anything. And on the flip side, I don't want it on the 100 and blowing my eardrums. So you want to make sure that your singable range is just within those realms that you know that it will always work for you and that it's not going to give out because it's one of those notes that's a maybe, maybe note. So I'm just going to quickly go through the most common voice types and I'm going to start with the gentleman. So gentlemen, if you are a bass or a baritone and you just did that range exercise, you might find that you were able to sing a note somewhere that was around about, let's have a look. You would have had one that was probably somewhere, maybe even down there, um, or maybe your bottom note was more comfortably around this area. And then your top register would have been maybe somewhere around here or even a little bit higher than that, maybe here. So fair distance. And those voices belong in what we'd call our bass slash baritone area. Tenors, you are generally higher than the baritones. And again, all of this, there, there are exceptions and there are extensions, but I'm just going to give you a rough guide. So for the tenors, you might find that your 
bottom note that you were comfortable singing was maybe around about here and then your note that you were comfortable maybe here for now and for some of you you might have even been able to go here and that's my tenor range moving into my altos and mezzos so altos you would have really kind of been around about this area that ah uh, mezzos maybe is slightly higher and then for your altos you might have peaked out and it depends on how much breath pressure you had as well but maybe somewhere around there and for the and for the mezzo sopranos somewhere around there and then sopranos finally around this area would have been your lower one and then anywhere up to here possibly higher and those are generally our sort of choir ranges if you like so if you're singing in a choir you would have seen that you've got the the basses the tenor the alto or they might have called it the mezzo line and the sopranos now why does range matter well it matters because if you want to think of it like a runner if you are running in the wrong distance you're just going to feel uncomfortable you probably can still do it but you're probably going to feel uncomfortable for most of the race and then if I let you run in a distance that really suits you that your body is designed to do you're just going to love it and feel super comfortable so some runners are designed to run a hundred really well or a kilometer really well or a marathon or an ultra marathon yes they can run those other distances but one of them is going to feel really easy and organic for them that's what we want for your range we want to make sure that when you're singing it feels like it matches you and your capabilities at that current time today's exercises what i'm going to do is focus on the two common ones that i come across so i'm going to give you some range exercises for those of you that are singing in choirs and finding yourself to have to sing higher and possibly higher for sustained periods of time or even lower for sustained periods of time and then I'm going to turn my attention to those of you that are singing maybe the contemporary and musical theatre repertoire where you're trying to take some more weight into that middle upper register and maybe you're finding that you're really struggling to get up there so I've got an exercise for you as well let's get cracking lip trills lip trills are such a fantastic exercise regardless of what genre you're singing now lip trills sound something like this like a really happy horse if you find that difficult to do you can absolutely use your fingers to help guide your lips into an easier position like you've just been botoxed i guess so if that helps you use it now in this exercise we're going to go one three five eight 10 and then come back down so the arpeggio we're going to add that tenth note on so it's going to sound something like this now the wonderful thing about using a lip trill is that it's going to open up your neck muscles and it's also going to show you if you are stopping your power supply your breath because it just won't work if you cut that off so you want to try this one with me i'm going to take you pretty high on this exercise especially to help those of you that are having to sing in those upper ranges such as tenor and soprano in particular here we go and love your work keep going One more this way. Coming back down. Excellent. Keep that power going. two did you make it the whole way through if so fantastic work if not awesome one for you to be doing in your regular practice 
Now this one comes with a warning. It's not particularly pleasant to listen to. It's going to be a case of my technique brings all the dogs to the yard. So don't say I didn't warn you. Now in this one, we're going to play around with vocal weight or the mix. So for some of you, you might be finding that you're hitting a wall for your high notes and that they're just not working. And sometimes that's due to the fact that you're still in this really heavy position from the bottom and haven't allowed enough of the change in the vocal fold to happen so that it can get into a slightly thinner position so it can hit that pitch. So we're thinking of this as like baking a cake. We're trying to find that right ratio that means that I've still got that power, but I'm also able to hit that note that I'm trying to achieve. So um, it's a bit of a yodeling exercise. We're going to transition between singing a note that's really full and got quite a heavy feeling and letting it completely yodel and flick over into one that's a much lighter sounding color. And if you are struggling to get that yodel to happen, well, that's a sign that you need to work on it to try and get that vocal agility happening for yourself. At the end of the exercise, I'm going to see if we can incorporate into one of the most beautiful songs of all time, Somebody to Love. So it's going to sound something like this. We are going to go up into thirds. Now, we are going to start our beginning note with a lot of heaviness and then we're basically just going to let it pop over when we go for that third and go into a much softer sound. So it's going to sound something like this. Ooh. So I'm going to play with the weight. I'm going to do that again. Ooh. Sounds a little bit like a fog horn. Next one. Keep going up, heavy, switch, heavy, heavy first, switch, heavy. Same deal. Last one in this direction. Coming back down. Excellent, a few more to go. Last one coming up. What did you discover? Did you find that you weren't really able to go into that softer mix? Or did you find that it was quite easy and you discovered then that you could add a little bit more of that feeling to those heavier notes? We're looking at trying to find that mix now, that right mix where I can add a little bit of that softer feeling into that fuller feeling and apply it to somebody to love. So as an example, you could try singing now. Somebody to So you're going for that really delicate mix once again. Somebody to Now we're going to add a tiny bit of that feeling as we come into that fuller mix as we descend now through the other passage. So Somebody to Breath. Love. Let's see if we can do that one again. Love. Oh, I 
feel like we just channeled Freddie Mercury.